Hello everyone, Coach Tickety here, and today we're going to be talking about some unwritten rules for every role in Overwatch 2. So whether you're a tank, DPS, or support main, or maybe play a little bit of all three, I promise that this advice will help guide your playstyle and help you find more success in your games. Now of course, in Overwatch 2, even though heroes fill the same role, they usually have very unique playstyles and different kits to help them find success. The advice in today's video will definitely apply to every hero in the game, but it will be up to you to slot this advice into your own playstyle and make it work in your own way. Valentine season is upon us, but you'll never dazzle that special someone while you're still hard stuck in Overwatch competitive. So if you're trying to level up your game so you can impress that Valentine this year, you should head over to GameLeap.com. Over there you'll find hundreds of guides and more being added every single week all designed to instantly help you rank up and take you from zero to hero. And this month only use the code on screen for a special discount. And with all those savings, you can even buy a second membership for your favorite duo partner. So what are you waiting for? Click on the link below and start your Game Leap membership today. Alright, let's kick things off with tanks, and my first rule being to know your matchups. With only one tank on either team in Overwatch 2, and with the abundance of tools that tanks are given in this game, it's very important to know exactly how you fare against the enemy tank in any game you play. You probably already know things like not many tanks can properly contest in Orisa in the front line, or not many people can keep up with Doomfist or Wrecking Ball's mobility, but have you asked yourself if your playstyle or maybe even hero choices are changing? Changing depending on who you're going up against. Now you don't have to tuck tail and run back to the spawn room at every chance to swap against an enemy tank, but you should know how, depending on what heroes they're playing, that affects your playstyle, how you're using your abilities, and what types of positions you're taking against them. Take Orisa as an example. When she's paired up against another anchor tank in the front line, she can usually bully them out of the way. Think Reinhardt's or Ramatra's for example. But when going up against a dive tank, say Wrecking Ball or Doomfist, she'll probably want to slow down her playstyle and save her abilities for when those tanks are going in for their dive so that she can shut them down and maybe even get a kill punishing them. Whatever the case, make sure you're taking note of what the enemy tank is playing and molding your playstyle around it. It's not just about what you want to do, but also about shutting down what the enemy is trying to do. My next rule for tank players is that not every fight needs to be about the front line. I have seen countless tank players just run it down mid every single fight and fail to see why they're struggling so much. Like we've already mentioned, not every tank is well suited to playing in the front line, so when you find yourself going up against that Orisa, maybe try working around her instead of through her. But even if you are playing a frontline driven tank, again like that Orisa, you still want to look out for other things around the map that might be affecting your frontline game plan. Are there too many uncontested angles around you? Is that high ground just too oppressive to work through? Look for the problems first before taking the fight to the frontline. And another thing to remember about this kind of advice is playing tank isn't about beating the enemy tank, as good as that feels. It's about winning the game on any role, and for the most part, as tank you want to be putting as much pressure as you can on enemy DPS and supports, since they're the ones doing the most damage and healing throughout a fight. So whenever you're playing tank, try to look for those reasons to detach from the front line. Is it just a losing matchup? Are there too many problems outside of the front line that you have to deal with? Even if it takes more time or burns through a couple more cooldowns, I promise you it will be worth it to take care of those problems first, and then carry on with the rest of the fight afterwards. And my next rule for tank players is to please don't fight without your team. As the lone tank player, you are usually the tip of the spear for your team's engage, leaving you at the front and leaving all your teammates behind you. This can often lead to a situation where you're not quite exactly sure how ready your teammates are for the upcoming engage, and while you might find a strong opportunity to get things started, your team might be reeling from some damage they might have taken or might have wasted some cooldowns, or might still be on their way back from spawn. If this sounds familiar to you, make sure you're taking the time to check up on your teammates whenever you can before going all in in a fight. Simply turning your camera around and checking up for teammates' positions, you can even see them through walls thanks to their outlines, can help save save your life before you decide to dump all your cooldowns into the upcoming teamfight. You should also take the time to check up on the scoreboard when you can to see what ultimates are close to charging and whether or not you've got any teammates still dead in the spawn room. And don't think you're off the hook just because you play tanks like Wrecking Ball or Doomfist or even Roadhog who have very individually focused game plans. While you probably won't be leading your team into battle in the front line on these types of tanks, you should still be making sure you're matching your timing with when they're ready to engage with you. It is a lot easier to find value on these 
these types of tanks when you're not constantly being focused down by all five members of the enemy team. So make sure your teammates are around for, if nothing else, then just to give the enemy something else to shoot at, but hopefully to line up synergy with them and make your engages more explosive. All right, moving on to you DPS players, my first rule for you is that duels are not always the answer. Just like with tanks, in any 1v1 situation, there are a lot of matchups to consider when it comes to finding an advantage against your opponent. But even for heroes who are usually favored in dueling situations, think maybe a DPS like Tracer, you're not going to rush into every fight and force a duel every time and expect to come out ahead. Whatever hero you're playing and whatever the matchup, you should be looking to find an advantage before committing to the duel. And advantages usually look like catching an enemy out of position or without their cooldowns available, or even just when they're too focused on doing something else like trying to shoot your teammates. So taking Tracer as an example, and maybe an enemy Widowmaker has her favorite dueling partner. Widowmaker should lose this duel 10 times out of 10 if Tracer plays properly. But just knowing that you should win the duel isn't an excuse for playing recklessly. If you burn three blinks trying to close the distance on Widowmaker and you're traveling in a straight line when she's already got you in her scope, you're probably not going to find much success. So look to stack up any of those advantages we just talked about. Can you catch Widowmaker out of position? Can you save all your blinks for taking the duel instead of getting to it? Maybe can you catch Widowmaker after she's used her grapple so she's got no mobility of her own? Or at the very least, try to catch her when she's scoped in on a teammate so she's not already lining up the shot before you show your head. Whatever the case is and whatever heroes you're playing, keep in mind that you're not trying to force duels, you're trying to find advantages. Keep that in mind and you'll find more success. And that leads me to my next rule for DPS players and that's the fact that there's more to overwatch than just finding kills. Now don't get me wrong, DPS heroes put up some of the biggest damage numbers in the game and are usually expected to be the ones finishing off kills in a teamfight. But if we tunnel too much on trying to close out every single kill opportunity, then we'll quickly find ourselves out of position, out of resources, and maybe even back in the spawn room. Overwatch is a game of trading resources with your enemies, and you should think about taking fights as a two-step process. First, we need to burn through all their resources, then we burn through their life. So when you get aggressive and force your enemies to back up off their positions or use all of their cooldowns, that is very strong value, but it won't always mean a kill. But if you do trade enough of these resources in your favor, the kills will come easily. So the next time you break a Rhine shield or force Tracer to recall or burn through Kiriko's Suzu, don't think about trying to get the kill immediately, but keep in mind that you've set yourself up for a very strong state of constant advantage now that those resources are off the table, and you should be looking to press that advantage by pushing aggressively as as safely as possible. Just don't go running off on your own chasing too many kills or burning through all your cooldowns too quickly because that's a surefire way of turning the advantage onto the enemy's side and maybe even getting yourself killed in the process. Moving on, my next DPS rule is that it's up to you to patch the holes in your team. Back in Overwatch 1, we had two tank slots, and this was usually the job of the off-tank slot to sort of make up for any shortcomings presented by the other tank or whatever DPS we're playing. So while we don't really have off-tanks anymore, those responsibilities still need to be met. With the DPS role having the widest and most diverse hero pool of all three roles in the game, it usually puts DPS players in a position to flex their play styles or hero choices to best make up for any shortcomings that the team has. Another way of saying this for some higher level players would be to say that it's up to the DPS players to find advantages in neutral situations. Whatever your team might need, there's usually a DPS or two that you could pick to help solve that problem. Need more frontline pressure to push that Orisa out of the way? Maybe you try a Junkrat or Bastion just to front load all your damage. Need more control around the map against annoying flank routes or oppressive high grounds? Maybe a long range DPS like Soldier 76 or Ash can help lock down those angles and prevent people from approaching. Again, this isn't just about hero choice or matchup knowledge or things like that, but more about adapting to the problems that your team is having before they can get their game plan rolling. So even if adapting to this problem doesn't mean changing your hero altogether, it will likely mean changes to your positioning, your cooldown usage, who you're focusing on during a fight, and just generally how fast you're trying to get into that fight. All right, let's talk supports. And my first rule here is do everything you can to stay alive. Don't die. Now, obviously this should apply to every role in the game and every player. You don't want to be dying in general, but for supports, this rule is most important because you are the lifeblood of your team. If you go down early in a fight, it won't be long before your teammates follow after you. 
The most avoidable situations I usually see support players in before they wind up dead is either when they're too tunneled on getting healing or sometimes even damage in before they end up realizing they are getting flanked or getting rushed on or things like that and they can't keep up with their position, or because they're burning through important cooldowns way too quickly, either panic using them too early on themselves or teammates or looking too aggressively with them to try and hit enemies. So if either of these situations sounds like you, make sure two things are happening. One, you're prioritizing your own life even above some of the ones of your teammates. Of course, whenever you are safe, you want to make sure you're keeping them up as long as possible, but you're not going to do so at the cost of your own personal safety. And the second is to squeeze as much value out of all of your cooldowns as possible. Don't just throw them Hail Mary into the team fight. Make sure you're responding to specific things and only using them when they're really necessary because when you do use them, you become so much more vulnerable. My next rule for support players is that you are not a heal bot. They're called supports, not healers for a reason. Now, of course, the one thing supports have in common is that they all dish out healing in some capacity, so you want to make sure you have good healing uptime and you're keeping your teammates alive around you, but the distinction here is that you're not only healing as part of your kit. Even characters who are primarily there for dishing out huge healing numbers, for example Moira, should also be focused on getting in some of their damage with their secondary fire and their damage orbs to make sure they're getting the most out of their kit at any time. Whatever support you find yourself playing, they usually have some form of utility or at the very least some decent damage output that you should be trying to maximize at any turn. Kiriko's got her kunai headshots, Baptiste has his primary burst fire, Ana has her biotic grenade, Lucio has speed, you get the idea. If you aren't able to find value with this non-healing side of your hero's kit, you're probably not finding as much value and therefore not finding as much success as you could be in your games. Imagine you and your Overwatch teammates are on a boat together trying to row through a race. The healing you offer your team is the equivalent of bucketing water out of a sinking ship. It'll keep you in the race, but being able to play into your utility or your damage adds to your speed. It puts you in the driver's seat and makes your boat go faster and maybe helps you cross the finish line first. So while healing is great if you've got teammates around you that are able to put you at constant advantage and keep you winning team fights, you'll need to play into utility and damage if you want to be the one carrying more situations and hopefully finding more wins. Moving on, my next rule for support players is that you need to keep up with a moving teamfight. What this means is that throughout a teamfight in Overwatch, as kills are being found by both sides, as cooldowns are being used and things like that, you'll need to be changing your position constantly to keep up with those updates. Let's say you start a fight with a very clear advantage, say you got an early pick. With that advantage, your team will likely want to push up and take more space and maybe try to find more kills. If you're playing a support in the back line, this means that you need to keep up with that movement to make sure that you're not getting split away from your team and that you can maintain healing LOS on them during that fight. On the other side of things, if the enemy team is the one who finds the early advantage, you should be expecting to back up sooner than most people because if you find yourself in a vulnerable position, you'll likely be the first target on their minds. This is obviously most important for support characters like Ana or Zenyatta who have no mobility in their kits. You need to act sooner in order to get to the same kind of space that a Mercy or Kiriko could get to. And of course, even if you do have all those defensive cooldowns available, you want to save them for as long as possible, so you don't want to be forcing to use them reactively or in a panic situation when you could have just traded out some space instead. And those are all of my go-to unwritten rules for every role in Overwatch 2. But there is so much that I didn't talk about in this video, so let me know down in the comments, what do you guys think? What are your go-to sayings when it comes to playing your favorite role or your main hero? Valentine's season is upon us, but you'll never dazzle that special someone while you're still hard stuck in Overwatch competitive. So if you're trying to level up your game so you can impress that Valentine this year, you should head over to GameLeap.com. Over there you'll find hundreds of guides and more being added every single week, all designed to instantly help you rank up and take you from zero to hero. And this month only use the code on screen for a special discount, and with all those savings you can even buy a second membership for your favorite duo partner. So what are you waiting for? Click on the link below and start your GameLeap membership today.